just in okay. Looks like we had some additional items added as well. So this will we were already pretty packed. So this will be interesting. Um, let's see. Uh, They, all right, um, so let's talk a moment about the agenda to maybe time box some stuff and figure out how we wanna do this because we have some big items. Uh, welcome back, Jason. I, I know we were, I was thinking about you uh, the last couple of days when we were on a couple of these other PRs and didn't mean to get back because I think yours to some extent is almost the easiest with some clarity on a couple of things we've been talking about. But, yeah, sorry. Um, also, I haven't I haven't been able to make the last couple of meetings. This is a bit of an uh, un, uncomfortable time for daycare pickup and stuff. So if we could get that done or, uh, before five thirty today, then I can disappear and get out of your hair, uh, or I can come back next week. But yeah, fair enough. Um, I don't know what the fixed CI thing is, and we've been discussing the merge data. Uh, so we'll try to let's see if we can get through those. We'll try to time box those to a relatively short time because I think the rest of them will which to be fair, we're on our agenda um, early. The, um, just to set, to set a, a, a goal to, to help with some of this because it might help with some of these. Uh, the larger discussions, there's been a couple of different approaches. We've been looking at various, when I say we, this, this larger group has been looking at around, it's centered around signatures, but it's really about linking artifacts, I think is the, the main piece. Uh, one of the artifacts being a, a signature. Um, the, there's a base of a larger discussion of, can we make changes to the existing manifest? Then there's another conversation, should, and maybe should we start something, um, I guess one manifest to rule them all, if, if I were to say something about what, what Justin has been proposing. Um, so I did, inject to be fair john did have some stuff in there first around the descriptors and uh the, about the references but there and then there's the one about the linking artifacts with the artifact spec the one of the fundamental differences to those two approaches is whether we can make changes to the existing schemas um if we decide we can then either approach can do that uh we just have to decide that we can and that kind of is a based on a discussion we had I guess two years ago when we started the artifact stuff and, and decisions there. There's another approach which basically has been something Justin's been working on of whether um, we should take a more holistic approach to uh, how we store things in registries and be a little bit more flexible. So that's the big furball there that I want to make sure we've got enough time for, uh, to be fair. Make sense? Are we going to take some time to read Justin's doc? That was the that was the problem. What do you want to it's do? Kind of, it's kind of it's kind of long. I thought we sh I, it might be best if we come back and discuss it next week because it's probably uh, um, it's probably a bit long to kind of digest in a meeting. Given we've got a lot of other things on the agenda. The thing about Justin's doc is, I think it's. I think it's rooting a bunch of the stuff that we've been all been dealing with for a while. And um, it's probably worth a read so that it might help give context to the other two conversations because to, it, these aren't additive per se. Like if we agree with the general direction of what Justin's proposing, it kind of mitigates the other two conversations we've been having. Is, is um, there a private conversation happening about this doc? I don't see a link sorry, to anything. I just wrote the doc this morning. I just missed the doc this morning. I'm just putting it in the. Um, okay. Uh, I'm just putting it in the thing now. And we, we try to be good about not, to be honest, Justin's been thinking about this for a while. I've been kind of poking well, at him. Can, well, he wanted was, to get this, it written down. This was, this was a kind of, okay, that's response to your PR the other day, basically, let's take this a bit further and be, be a bit more drastic, really. So it's, the point is, is that we did want to get this done. He, he had some good ideas. We wanted to get it written down. We wanted to get it shared. It's not fair to dump this on everybody and expect to read it because to read and digest will take the majority of the slot we have here. 
I do think it's a really good read to help us really think about how we want to think about this um, is kind of the main piece. Um, and the only reason I'm kind of focusing on that before I get back to the actionable items, if we agree, then I think we can give more time to get into some of the actionable items and we can defer the, uh, or, or maybe we could start a conversation. Actually, all right. So I think if you read Justin's doc, you kind of say, well, do we really need to make changes to the current one or just fix it once and for all? If we think he's just smoking crack and we all want to ignore Justin, then we should probably go back to the other two. Um, I think it's fair to at least give him the benefit of the doubt before we declare he's smoking crack. Uh, so, Steve, so with I, that I think said- there's, there's two options here. One is we spend time reading Justin's meeting before, reading Justin's doc before we do anything. The other is that we delay the topics that you think are covered by Justin's doc until next week and we use this intervening week to read Justin's doc and digest it. If you're saying that we shouldn't be talking about the other things until we've read Justin's doc, then we have to change the, the schedule or we have to read Justin's doc now. That's what I'm proposing. Oh. A question for Justin. Have you read the other uh, pull requests that yes. are uh, addressing this? Yes. Okay. That's why okay. I that's why I wrote it because <laughs> it was kind of trying to extend what was in the pull request and the Derek's feedback on those pull requests. Would you be able to give a summary of your objections to either one or both? Um, the basic, the my, I think there's two things really. One is. Um, if we're going to make things more generic, we should just make them totally generic. And two, we need to address um, how the clients do upgrades um, because we really haven't done that properly. And for, for clients to be able to do upgrades, they have to have um, before, old and new versions of artifacts in the same thing that they get from the registry. Um, and so my proposal actually goes and lets you have like V1 and V2 in the same JSON document so that the client can pick the one it can work with or V1, V2, V3 or any, anything else you want. Um, and so there's one document type that the clients have to be able to understand and then they can pick which things inside it that they actually work with. Um, so, and then in terms of the fully generic bit, just like, don't make any assumptions about what the shape of an artifact actually is, whether it has layers or, or configs or whatever, just, just have a totally generic format that anyone can fill in for whatever is appropriate. So it's making the proposals more generic and really addressing the upgrade issue and a couple of other issues like um, indirect, uh, being able to reduce indirection as well, but really trying to resolve the upgrade issue, which is really kind of, I feel has been blocking us because the formats we designed were just not actually in practice upgradable in a, any um, useful kind of way, which is why we're running into problems. So it looks to me like there are, again, two conflicting needs. Uh, one is the immediate need to just, you know, push to be able to push some signature to the registry or to be able to push, you know, some arbitrary artifacts to a registry. Um, do we need to wait until everyone's decided on a common layout? or can we merge the immediate thing now? There's, there's two fundamental pieces that we've been talking about. One is being able to store additional individual things in there, whether it be an SBOM, whether it be a signature. That can already be done today. There's an optimization John is proposing on using the data element, which is what I assume he's trying to, to do with some of these pieces, but storing another thing, but still storing an individual 
artifact. It's, you know, whatever it might be. The one that stores links so that you can say the signature or the bomb is associated with this other artifact is a change that registries would have to implement to support some uh, garbage collection and other management on it. So there's no free ride for the second. So then the question is, if we're going to make a change, what is the extent of that change? I mean, it sounds to me like the, you know, you can currently use the index, the image index to store whatever, you know, manifest you want along with the image manifest. Um, so, I mean, I, I suppose you could like upload a dummy image, then get the, uh, then create an index.json and then, you know, link whatever you want to it. Um, but I think the references are kind of like a more immediate need to be able to reason about how all the artifacts are linked together. Um, well, whatever. I mean, it seems to me like uh, either one of the approaches is fine. No one really has an opinion about it. I mean, I certainly have opinions. I would rather uh, read Justin's thing and think about it. Yeah, so maybe before we get too deep into the weeds here, we're about 15 minutes past the top of the hour and we're not really following our agenda. Um, what I propose for now is that we go back to the actionable items so that we can get through them. And then we can come back to this and either decide that we'll read the document in the meeting or we can delay the document until, or delay both the, the discussion about the document and the related topics until next week so that everyone's had the time to actually read the doc. So hold on a minute. Isn't the data kind of related to this, the, the data? Um, I think it's related in that if we're going to replace the entire specification, it's no longer worth our time to talk about it. But I think it's useful outside of a new version rev. It's independently valuable to be fair. Like there's there's independent value in the data element. It's just the all the things that we're all trying to solve. It's it doesn't solve the problem of what we're trying to solve. It's a piece of it. So to John's point, unless we've solved the whole thing, we, we really didn't make any progress on, on the bargain thing. It itself has some value. Oh, so there's, yeah, there's two other that. there's two other actionable agenda items that are not the data field. We should maybe get through those first because those don't look like they're. Uh, conflicting with the document that Justin has, and they don't look like, they, they look like things we can actually talk about. Totally agree. I, I was trying to be careful. I wanted to make sure that we didn't rush through those to get to the things that were originally on the agenda. So I'm, I'm bringing this up as, does everybody agree with what you're suggesting? And then let's just go through that, not rush through those, make those actionable things done, and then queue up that whole other one for some reading, conversations over the week, and we can pick up next week. Everybody agree? Any objections? The annotation part about uh, recording uh, the image from which the current manifest is derived from, um, it's a little bit confusing for me because I had uh, you know, I've been working on this for a while and I, I have like SBOM structures that describe all of that stuff. Um, as a basic annotation, I'm totally fine with it. Okay, it, so let's let's just say, let's, let's do that. Let's do the actionable ones. We'll park the rest, depending on how much we get through the first three, we can figure out what we wanna do about reading or some discussion about the last. So why don't we, cause we're already jumping into it. I just, and I just wanna make sure everybody's cool with that. I am just uh, addressing that it might be linked to the larger topic of references. Um, I actually so don't think it is to, to cause I, this is one of those where I think they are separable to, to queue up Jason and then I'll, I want Jason to run with it. But the, the premise here is S-bombs are hugely valuable. They cover a much larger scope of things. 
this is a targeted thing that says that customers have been trying to do this for a lot. Users, customers have been trying to do this for a long time. How do they do the, the, the very simplistic thing of what is this image based on? So if any changes happen to it, can I trigger a rebuild? It is not trying to cover the whole SBOM thing. So it's literally just that base piece. Is that fair, Jason? Yeah, very fair. I think the conversation in the PR has sort of meandered into complex cases, which I agree exist and which I agree should be solved. But I think there is value to having a very common, uh, very narrowly defined case that is well understood. I don't know who I'm trying to convince. I think Nisha is already convinced. So that is my that is my weekly uh, uh, reminder that this annotation is a possibility if, if you but want it to be. Um, I mean, that it's better than nothing, I'll say. That. Exactly, yeah. And then what we have today is nothing. And what we'll have next week is nothing if we don't decide this week. Yeah, and that note plus one from me. Okay. Okay. Thank you. So I think the only thing we saw in the base annotations one was there was this conversation, are we making it for humans or making it for automation? And if it's for automation for general use, then we should just be specific about it. So tooling would know exactly what to expect. Um, and I thought it was really close. I think there was a combination of some examples of something we could refer to in Docker Hub that exists. We could throw a digest on there of something that exists, you know, something like whether it's be the hello world image that's, I don't even know what hello world's based on, but whatever hello world's based on and then have that hello world be the, the ref name, I think it was, and the digest be of that. And then the base name, I'm butchering the property names, Jason. So help me with what you were trying to yeah. do. Uh, you all have more experience writing this spec than I do. Is it helpful to have actual names referenced? I find sometimes in documentation when real things are used in sample values, it can muddy things because people say, oh, the hello world image is no longer based on Ubuntu. It's based on BusyBox. And now there's like all this confusion about and I think well, it's when you could have just said my image and some digest, right? I think it, Hello World's based on Scratch anyway, so it's a really bad example. Yeah, terrible example. <laughs> so, I, like, I, I, I defer to all of you who know what you're doing, uh, but as a, as a reader, as a potential reader of the spec, I think I might find it useful to say some image, clearly an example, fake dummy value and some fake dummy digest, than to base it on a real thing. That being said, I just want to get it merged. So if you tell me to put in puppies, I'll put in puppies. I don't care. Does anybody else feel any kind of way about anything? I want I have a very... to be based on puppies. <laughs> All right, puppies it is. My, my only oh, concern cats, dogs, with it is that we are defining what a base image is. And uh, I mean, if, if everyone disagrees with me that we should definitely define what that a base image means this exact thing. Okay, fine, I'll, I'll let it go. But I'd rather be able to interpret a little bit what a base image means. And I'm happy with even suggesting the common use of a base image, but that, that's my only nit. John, is that, is the, uh, would it satisfy you to have another bullet in the, in the spec? Or like what, I mean, uh, propose a change and I'll accept it basically that that satisfies you I, I agree that that it sort of sucks that we're half defining base image i don't i don't want to over specify it because people will argue i don't want to under specify it because then it doesn't mean anything i don't know i think i think i have towed a good line but as always ideas welcome what would you call it john i just would omit the the perhaps omit the definition of what a base image is, or at least, I guess since it's a should, um, I do have some flexibility to ignore it. Uh, but if it were a may be, you know, the zero indexed contiguous, whatever, whatever, um, I would be slightly happier. That is the only difference I'm looking for, really. Is there I'm another wondering... definition? Sorry, go ahead. Oh, I was actually wondering where the term base image came from. Um, perhaps from things I've been saying, uh, there is such a thing. I mean, so there's the, there's the original like image operating system, but um, I, I suppose uh, what, what you really mean 
is a starting image or or uh, or uh, your image's dependency dependent image or something like that although you can't use dependency because uh, that's just that's just a build a container build dependency not uh, not necessarily your deployed container Wait, dependency if, if you want to not have layered terms you could just call it layer zero which is what you're but it's for. but it's but not it's, that's less confusing that's more confusing for the for most users but yeah, I don't know what it's layer not, zero means because, like, when I say you know using Docker build, when I say from, it's bringing the layers in from that, and my layers add upon that. So it's that's layers my layers minus, I guess, I, you know. And then there's other ways to build images as well. So I, I don't know if people would object to base base reference, base name, base image. I, um, I think that I think that maybe base is the least terrible word for it. I think we can come up with worse names, but I, I have yet to hear a better, a, a least ter a less terrible version than base. Uh, but I, I mean, I, so I, think I have, the issue is I have... that like there's no intersect, there's no derivation, there's no layer sharing that's really defined in the spec here. So maybe the way that we talk about this is. This is an, an annotation that can describe an image which intersects where the layers intersect with this image. Uh, so I have used the term imported image. Would that work? Without without uh, explanation or context, I don't think I understand. Like I, I, if somebody said, this is my imported image, I don't think I would understand what that means. I think I understand what base image means, but are we trying to solve my objections? Because I don't care what it's called. I just I I care about my flexibility to use it for things that do not necessarily share the zero with index uh, contiguous layers. Now, can you elaborate what you want to use it for? Because I think there's like an unknown about what the other case. Like I think we all understand. Like Mike put it, it's like the base is the from. If you use from, yeah. It's, there's I, uh, no multi-inheritance. It's a single thing. You can easily define that. What are the other scenarios you're thinking of? So I don't use Docker files. I don't have any froms. Uh, but I do use other tools that depend on an image. Uh, and when I when that image changes, I need to rebuild my image. Um, that's all I'm looking for, basically. I, I don't want to only like be out. Um, the should makes it feel like I'm doing something wrong if I'm not using Docker files. And I think that's incorrect and kind of over focuses on one specific build tool. I think if we called it from, if it was image.from.ref whatever, or image.from.digest, I would absolutely agree with you. Uh, I also don't build things with Docker files. So I also like, uh, uh, I think we are using the same tools and therefore uh, I, I don't know how you have a different view, so, but so, okay. uh, uh, one thing I'd like to do is basically, if I could, if this were not specifically the contiguous bottom layers, uh, I could put as my base image uh, a representation of all of my build dependencies that isn't necessarily going to be in the final file system, but contains anything that, if it were to change, I would want to rebuild my image. That's that's what I'm trying to get at. So you kind of have an arbitrary image that's got everything that you would want in it. Like just just randomly saying, there's a bunch of NPM packages, a bunch of RPMs, whatever it is that your image, if anything changes in that, you would know. And if that, so there's a digest associated with that. So if that changes for any reason, you would trigger a, a, a rebuild of your thing. Yeah, I think you should use your own label for that rather than someone else's that has a click on those. But you're, you're free to use whatever you want because these are, there's no one's going to, the cops on but is that any around. different than the from statement? Like, is that any different from a base layer? I mean, effectively, it's the same thing. So I will probably use whatever this annotation is, regardless of the language. I just, I would feel better about what I'm going to do if it said may instead of should. But even, but since it should and not must, you still have the flexibility to do whatever you want. Which is why I'm happy to drop. Okay. Does anyone want to pick up John's John's objection and keep carrying it, or do we? Okay. 
I, I personally don't care because I feel like this only solves, uh, you know, one particular problem and not all of the problems, so. Yeah, uh, I'll, if I can solve one problem today, I will leave very happy. Uh, <laughs> I'll solve all problems later. But, but I agree, no, there, there's like, there's a, a wide open area of things like this that we could do better at, uh, but this is one. You'll need at least two labels to solve all the world's problems. <laughs> <laughs> I think he's got um, two or three. I care. He actually is more than one, so I think he's, he's getting close. Yeah, yeah. Uh, okay. Uh, with that, I gotta go pick up my kid. But thank you, everyone, for the discussion. I'll uh, I'll see y'all next week, probably. Thanks, Jason. Okay. Um, somehow six fix CI got merged in before the data field. So I, I'm not sure if that was a quicker fix or what, but uh, John and Vincent. Somehow a giant document got appended to the list as well. Um, I think we should fix the Travis being broken. Um, we can't merge stuff because Docker Hub is throttling us. Can anyone who knows the people who can approve that poke them via non GitHub channels because they have not yes. responded? I can do that. I just uh, who submitted the request? Just Slack me whoever submitted the request, and I'll just or whatever. I can just I can deal with it. I just think it's a, there's a PR to Vincent Bats. P, uh, Vincent Bats sent a PR to fix it by just moving it to Quay. Uh, but if there's another way to fix that, that's fine too. I just wanted to be fixed. Should we keep Travis or should we move it to GitHub Actions? Yeah, I was just about to say, I mean, those IPs are already whitelisted. So uh, anyway, it, it'd be Travis has been extremely slow lately. So it just that works. Just means somebody has to do work. That's all. <laughs> We've had the same problem with the, the CNCF distribution where we were trying to get that stabilized as well. And I think the, the proposal there was to use uh, GitHub Actions as well. And, In this particular issue, it's, it's is already Vincent's white, image. Distribution's already whitelisted. Yes, it's Vincent's account. If you if you had an OCI account, I can get it whitelisted. But if it's Vincent's account, it's more difficult. You don't want to whitelist Vincent? Well, I don't <laughs> mind whitelisting Vincent, but he, uh, it's a bit. Uh, uh, if it was OCI, it would just be quicker. I mean, it's it's Vincent's image. If he wants to move it to Quay and he opens a PR and then let him do that, it doesn't really matter if he's owning where the image is. I think the bigger problem here is that there's not enough active image spec maintainers to actually just approve it and merge it. Yeah, the, yeah. the subset of that list who are active is extremely small. I, I pinged one person at Google who is on that list to ask if I could replace him and I've not heard back, but I'm interested in replacing them if anyone supports that I would go through the process. Yeah, I just kind really of a quick one. general problem. I just really quick when I asked about this Docker Hub um, rate listing or rate uh, limiting. Um, Justin, if you open it up for an organization, does that open it up for GitHub Actions users or globally? Like what you're suggesting? Uh, globally. We just we whitelist the whole org. Okay. Yeah. I mean that that would give us time to not worry about Travis, but I also agree like it's Vince's image. So that's all. Okay, so what's the next steps? I think we should just- And the maintainers? Like Derek said, yeah, we just need to get more maintainers to press the button. That's an aspiration. I don't know if it's an action item. It, I meant find one to actually just press the button because they're the GitHub's hard limited to requires LGTMs. It's not that we can just vote to overwrite it. We'd have to like change the rules. Okay, why don't we take this one offline? Sounds like we should just be able to resolve this by emailing a couple of people or getting something. Sounds like Docker can fix the throttling on that one. Um, GitHub doesn't have isn't throttled, so um, we can. There's a couple of ways to solve this. Yeah, I mean, it's an important topic considering all three of our actionable items today 
are in the image spec repo and we have zero image spec maintainers on the call. So it's almost like nothing is actually actionable. Yeah, I think that's the root issue. I mean, we can migrate to GitHub Actions and then we're still left looking for someone to merge the PR. Okay. Um, are we moving on or are we sitting here pontificating more? Move on. Derek's point is interesting. Uh, who do, uh, the folks I have to convince are not on this call about the data field, uh, and one of the maintainers has already approved it. So perhaps it's not worth discussing unless anyone is interested in discussing it. Well, I think that I, one I has mean, a higher I've... topic related to artifacts that we can discuss. And I think, and that's one of the reasons why I wanted us to move some of the new, new work to the artifacts repo. I, I, the way I see it, image spec is pretty frozen in terms of like feature ads, but. That's just my opinion. We could, I have opinions about that, uh, but I'm happy to talk about it. I, I think there, we can't make backwards incompatible changes, but um, additive non-breaking optional stuff seems fine to me. Uh, so the data field I think falls into something that is reasonable to add to image spec at this point, um, but maybe the references field is something that we wouldn't want to add. All right, well, let me let me ask this to figure out because there's we start to get into the, the furball of the larger changes. John, if we resolve whatever that bottom section is, whether it be just in spec or there are other ways to get things linked, do you want to focus on the data element? Because to me, the data element is relatively small. I, I've raised the you know, concerns around the size, turning a manifest into a, a blob, and we we can certainly talk about that. But if we feel that the other things circumvent the, the use of the data field, then maybe we don't worry about data and we get onto the larger conversation. It's your PR, so I I'm, want your opinion. I'm, I would certainly like to merge it, right? Because I could start using it today um, and it would improve many things. I, I, I would like to merge it. That's why I created the PR. Um, if, and I haven't read Justin's doc, so I, I don't really know how to respond to that. There's a little bit in my doc where I suggest that data analysis would be useful, actually. <laughs> um, yeah. I'm... I mean, I, I, it, it, I, I don't see any, I mean, I, I think it's, um, there's definitely cases where you've got small amounts of data where, um, where, which are unlikely to be shared or they're so small, it doesn't matter where it seems to make sense to me. Yeah, I, and so I think, so my, okay, so my change is in addition to the descriptor type, um, per the image spec, if you are going to add new fields or specs uh, to OCI documents, you should start with a descriptor if, if it makes sense, because that makes it more general. Um, the descriptor well, is used every The only problem about, well, there's only one issue about making changes to descriptor, which is that there have been some proposals that we, descriptor is what we sign and we don't want to sign a descriptor that may or may not have a data URI in it, which is optional. Why not? Because it would diff what we sign would differ depending on whether someone had decided to put a data, a data URI in it. Well, you would sign the instance of a thing, not something abstractly. I, I mean, well, you... well, we had suggestions to sign it. Um, Um, to normalize and sign abstractly at various points. I think, I don't know. I, I, I don't, I tend to think it's not what we should sign is not what I put in my proposal to sign, but, um, there have been proposals on that. Be, I think that would be the only downside I can think of. I, I also like the idea of signing descriptors. The only issue I could see with data fields is maybe non-reproducibility of the generated descriptor, but. Uh, you shouldn't really be relying on re reproducibility if you're signing things. I, these seem like orthogonal problems. I mean, if you've signed something, you have you're a different guarantee than you would get from something being reproducible. I, 
I don't know. I, I might just be missing it, but I don't see the issue with it. It's a valid point, though. If there's a, a normalization across versions of the descriptor definition, right, and you would have a different sign, signature for based on de definition, unless you had unless you had some a priori description that said you had to actually sign the whole JSON structure, right? Um, I, so I don't know. I mean, we have a content addressable store and we're signing things in it. We don't have the flexibility to change them because they're content addressable. So I, I mean, canonicalization can help with like making things reproducible, but I don't know that it matters. I, I, I might just be completely misunderstanding the issue. And if someone can like have an example to describe this, that would help me a little. So um, where does the index come into this whole thing? Um, because I think like uh, without the references, the descriptor is just like a descriptor, not really a pointer. I, I mean, an index is a list of descriptors. And so, if, I mean, if we're still talking about the data field, um, an, an index that has a, a descriptor pointing to something could embed the content of that thing. So say you're pointing to Hello World's manifest, um, you could embed that within the index in the descriptor that points to the Hello World manifest. It, it's generic. You know, descriptors are very generic. An image is somewhat specific. An index is a little specific, but but the descriptor is a very generic pointer. So you the know, reason. Oh, sorry. Go on. Oh, I was going to say that the reason why I keep coming back to index is that there needs to be like some kind of starting point. The index seems to me as like the starting point. And from there you could, you know, have descriptors and descriptors and, you know, build your whatever graph. I think that is what's happening today. Um, in two contexts, there's uh, in the registry most, and a lot of things start with a, a, a pointer to an image. Uh, you can head that URL and get back a, a set of HTTP headers that can be used to construct a descriptor. You have the content length that becomes the size. You have the content type, which becomes the media type. And then you have the Docker content digest, which becomes the digest. Uh, from there, you have an entry point to often a manifest list for multi-platform images, or I mean, it could really be anything. Um, and, and in the on disk context, there's the OCI image layout, uh, and the index.json is described as the entry point, which is itself an index. So I, what, what you're describing is the case today. If there is favorable opinion of the descriptor, can we call out like what limits they should have? Because um, the serialization is an attack vector how much you can stick into a descriptor becomes a problem. Right now we can trust the manifest in terms of how much can be downloaded. So I wanna make sure that the data data element length, if at all we do agree to kind of put it in there, has a limit of what it defines. It also affects caching in the front end, right? Like the memory footprint because manifests are cached. We wanna kind of make sure that as soon as people start sticking in random data into the data field, how much of that is gonna impact uh, from a performance profile as well. So getting some guidance around what is an acceptable data length would help um, at least from uh, folks who want to kind of run the um, uh, front end as well. I, up to one problem I have with, I, I agree with you, right? I mean, that's a problem. Um, one issue I have with defining a limit is that the descriptor could be used in context where there is, there's no limitation, right? Like there's no reason, say if I'm storing something on disk um, that I should really limit the size of this practically. Uh, but, which is why I added language to this PR to the effect that if you care about portability, you should not just embed arbitrary things. Um, the, the actual limit depends on the implementation, right? Like Docker Hub, GCR, ACR, Quay may have very different limitations. Um, 
at container D, we have a four megabyte limit for any, any manifest that we download. So anything that's basically a download is started, you don't know the length beforehand, we will limit the, the download to four megs because we never want arbitrary downloads of any user defined or any user defined uh, name to just uh, go unlimited. So in reality, manifests are much smaller than that, but uh, yeah, I'm not sure if OCI should call that out, but it's probably worth just calling that out to somewhere. It's registries and clients, if they define that differently, could have problems. Yeah, and I mean, it would be silly to pick a number that is higher than uh, some registries could support because that would arbitrarily pick on them. So I, I don't want to be responsible for picking a number, and so I don't think we should. And but I mean, that's why I wrote the, the guidance about portability. If you think that can be clarified in some way or um, made stronger, I'm, I'm open to suggestions. I mean, I think, look, any, any cloud can implement whatever they want. So you can just tell customers, submit these manifests for us and we'll support it, whatever that we and I it means. The purpose of the spec is to allow portability so customers can move content from Docker up to clouds or across clouds or whatever the situation, or on-prem for various projects. So if we're not there's two parts one if we're not specifying a size then there's nothing in the spec that keeps make sure that there is some continuity and the attack vector is another interesting one. in addition to the caching problem the attack vector is interesting because we've been using the manifest as a way to find out what the thing is and then make a determination whether you should proceed to bring the content down so if there's now content in it that can be of a size that were the attack vector then that actually kind of makes another problem so i I'd be, personally, I think it's, if we, it's already in the spec, it's already there. It's just a matter of clarifying its usage. If we put a size constraint to it that said, this is not meant to upload videos into the manifest, it's meant, and I'm not trying to pick on Mark, it was just, it was an interesting conversation about how he's trying to use it. Then it says, great, we have some additional data that you don't have to make the round trip on, but it's a clear intent that this is not meant to replace blobs. It's a meant to be an optimization for a decision criteria, if you will. And if we don't put a size on it to some reasonable size, then, then why do we put it in the spec? Let registry A sit, tell our customers they can use it for this, and that's all it's promised to do. Well, you, could, you can, I mean, you can have a, you can have a thing saying that registry should accept, should not have a minimum size more than 256 bytes, say, and then that specifies interop, and anything more than 256 bytes might not be interop. For example, to pick a random number, um, and that that's a reasonable compromise for the people who, because given you don't have to use this thing at all, um, but giving people two hundred fifty six bytes lets them put, say, a signature in it, which is kind of useful um, for reducing round tripping, um, but it doesn't let them put a more than a very minimal image in it, a picture in it, for example, icon, say, I don't know. You're saying there's not a max, but there's at least a minimum so that there, a yeah, user there's, could yeah, so get. The, yeah, so the, there's a there's a max, there's a minimum that everyone has to support. So if everyone, everyone has to support 256 bytes, but you don't have to support more than that, but you can't say I only support 12 bytes because that would mean that no one could use it at all because like it would just be unusable. You might as well just not use it. Yeah, I think the minimum gives a room for a viable spec for all operators. Um, a max is always a good to have, like you can implement the limits as much as you want. I, I feel like you're, you're, so the concern happens at push time, right? Like you're, you're not gonna pull an image that couldn't be uploaded. So if you want to limit the size, you do that at push time and that's fine. A lot of the conversation about notary is a compromised registry, right? So. Uh, can you flood a client that is pulling an image with a pretty giant manifest? You can pretty much fill out the disk with that, right? That's the kind of. Could do that anyway. Yeah. I mean, it, you can put labels in it. Yeah, yeah, exactly. The, the annotations. This is already a, a problem. If if it is a problem that we want to solve, we should solve it in a separate discussion because it currently is a problem whether or not we merge this. Okay, makes sense. Um, I see what you're saying. I think it was interesting for Mark's engagement in this because he was highlighting a scenario that I think we're trying to 
I don't want to say protect from because there's some interesting stuff he's trying to get to, but that is kind of the things that break. Like nobody's expecting an annotation to have, you know, a, a gigabyte worth of content or even 10 megs worth of content. Um, yes, it's and that's kind of why I was using the circuit breaker, the power panel as the example. You, if you add up all the individual breakers, of course it's going to exceed, but it gives flexibility within it. I think we're we're starting to declare something that suggests to somebody that's already jumped on it and before we even finished approving it that wants to use it for something much larger than what I think any of us are trying to say would be consistent across our registries. So I think defining the circuit breaker for that element where all the individual elements added is more than what a max manifest would, would uh, support anyway, but it defines a usage boundary that would be clear to him like, okay, this isn't really what I thought it was. Let me do this other approach instead. I agree with uh, defining a minimum there. Um, I think a little bit with the image spec is it's, the registry shouldn't be as opinionated, but I think it's more the clients that have to be uh, careful here in terms of like downloading from potentially unknown sources, whereas registries are handling uh, data of an unknown size quite often. Um, but yeah, I, th I think defining some minimum in the spec here to say that uh, clients and registries should handle at least manifests of this size. Uh, As another example of something that got big, there was a conversation that Tuff would take all manifests or references and put it in an index and submit it to kind of support the tough metadata. So that's another place where I can see this. In addition to the fact whether it was stable at any one point to support it, content doesn't constantly change and you got a race condition, but just the size of what that, whether it be a, I wasn't sure whether it was the references stuff that they were suggesting doing or it was an index, but either way, if you try to put everything that's in a repo or even a, obviously a registry, that would be huge as well. So I think both sizing the element and sizing the total would be a good constraint to add. And maybe it's a minimum as opposed to a maximum is a, is a better way. Like all To use this manifest, you, it, the registries are expected to support up to, or a minimum, uh, uh, um, support a minimum of X. The data element should support a minimum of Y. And then there's some guidance to work with. I guess so I don't know I why the, you, go ahead, sorry. I, say, I think the max should just be on the manifest, but yeah, you have to be careful here because if you add a data element, then you might give clients they're trying to pack the manifest up into that limit. I, yeah, I, I think it'd be reasonable to define a minimum size that needs to be supported in the distribution spec, but I don't see why we should impose that on say completely offline scenarios. What does offline scenarios mean to you? Uh, that don't go over the internet. Yeah, but it's a minimum, so you can use more. I mean, it's yeah. like, it's just, you have to be able to support 256 right. bytes. Sure. So you can right. I, I don't, you can support. I, I like minimum. Uh, it should go in the distribution spec, but it doesn't make sense to me that, I guess it can be out here, that's fine. But like adding a maximum so that registries are happy to the manifest size seems strange. Uh, I, I'm fine with minimums. Yeah, I think I agree that uh, maximum belongs more so in the distribution spec if, if it's limited. And it looks like Mike actually found some text that talks about some sizes as well. So yeah, I, I, it, for one of the well, that was the annotation, right? Yes. But I, I think the point is there is some uh, existence of constraints that we've been identifying, and building more on that is good. And look, 
I think I think you've got some action. I think we all agree that if this thing would be useful if there was a minimum size to set expectations so that somebody could know that as long as they fit within this size, they will get consistency across. If they want to optimize for a cloud specific or a, a registry specific solution, then that registry can say, well, I support, certainly support the minimum, but you can also stick, you know, a movie in there if you want. And they will and that registry will support it. Uh, but there's no expectations that it would be consistent to move it across. And it's fair for a customer to have that expectation. And then registries can say, as we do today, we all have various size constraints expectations, whether it's a tiering thing or a max size or whatever. And then customers can understand that as long as I stay with this minimum, it's got transportability. If I want, if a registry wants to support a larger maximum, they can do that as well. Makes sense. I guess the only other thing is I, when I was thinking about this as a semantic for a new specification, I was assuming that it would be, well, obviously it would be required to be supported because it was part of the spec, but the other thing I was assuming that you could have a, a data URI like, uh, I, mean like a, I mean, like a data URI on the web, you would not actually have to have that object in the registry at all. It would, it could it would just be in the manifest. Whereas this, because it has to be backwards compatible, it has to be both in the registry and in the manifest. So you have to push the item as well, just in case the client doesn't understand data, the data semantic, because it's an extent, an optional extension. So you have to put the item in both places. Whereas on a new spec, I misunderstood that. that. So, so if we're going to leave the semantics the same in any potential new spec as the same as this, it's or would we be inconsistent and say in the new spec, it does not have the same behavior as the old spec? So there are only like five minutes left and a ton of other topics on here. Um, well, we said we were gonna refer to the topics to the reading for next week. So we were, that's why we had that conversation up front to, to say, we have time for the quote actionable ones. And then we'd set expectations for next week that we read the docs and have the ability to have a thorough conversation on the, the following things. So the, the Justin, the, your point though, what I'm a little confused, the way I read John's PR was it's data that's serialized into it, it yeah, that it wasn't also, a URI. You'd also have to push that data into the registry because there could be clients that don't understand data, data fields because they're existing clients. So you have to have it in the manifest and you also have to push it into the registry. My, my okay, that was the part John, of, that I was. My kind of new proposal was assuming it was just in the manifest because every client has to understand this, and therefore, which is a better situation to be in because clearly that's what you'd rather have. I mean, it's like a like it, the the whole point is if it's, it's if it's in line, then you don't you can just use it and you don't have to fetch it. And having to push it as well is kind of annoying, but required by compatibility. And that's what I was confused, John. That's what I was trying to get some clarification is, can I use this standalone? I put some data in it. I may not have any blobs whatsoever. The image spec currently says you have to have at least one, one layer, but I should, my thought was the observation is I can put stuff in it and I can use it. And it has nothing to do with anything that's a layer. It's not meant to be one or both. I just don't understand. Right. You, it would have to go on the descriptor pointing to a layer. and. So you need one descriptor, right? This has to go on a descriptor. True, because the data element is on the descriptor, not on the manifest. Uh, but just because the data is on it doesn't mean that it has to be a, re, a, a summary. There is a correlation there. I, uh, all right. It is, is the data. there? I mean, there's a digest. It has to be the same. It can't be just random data. It, You've got mute. Oh. I think Steve's on mute. Steve, you're on mute. Steve, you're still on mute. Thank you. Thank you. Um, try not to do the echo thing. I think it's the thing that was confusing a little bit is that the real the real optimization was it's in the manifest and I don't it's not on a descriptor, it's on the manifest. And if I have a manifest that is a that is a signature, there is no blobs. I don't need a blob. Yeah, so there's no way you can do that with 
and have backwards compatibility. You can only do that in a new, if clients are required to understand data, which they can't be. So again, it's a transitional, it's an upgrade. It's, it's one of our- Well, it's a new problems. element. If somebody's, it's not really new, it's been there, but it'd be a new usage of an existing property. If something knows to read the data, then there, you don't need a fallback. Like if we yeah, started but, putting signatures in it. Yeah, but if- you don't need to put the data in the manifest because the data is the manifest. I don't understand what it would mean to have a data field on the manifest. If a manifest, so take this signature signing scenarios just because it's a smaller piece of data as opposed to an SBOM. I'm assuming an SBOM has a reasonable size that probably exceeds what we would stuff in a data element. If a manifest could have a chunk of content in it and a manifest represents an artifact then I can submit a signature as a, man of, in a, as a manifest using what we have today. And if the data element was just on the manifest, not on the descriptor, then I could submit a manifest with the data element that is the signature, somehow link it, which we have I, I think what you want is my idea of being able to just push a descriptor. Because if you could just push a descriptor as a manifest, then what you're saying makes sense. But if you can't, then what you're saying doesn't make any sense. It, it doesn't fit in what we have today. And I think that's what we're trying to figure out is how we fit that. So. Um, yeah, so one option is this thing I proposed is, you know, just pushing a descriptor uh, and that points to a single thing. I think that's what you're getting at. It would be nice if an artifact could just point to a single thing, uh, but we don't have that, as you said, we could. Yeah, I think today we think of registries as manifests are the entry point, the, def the definitions of things and the blobs make up the thing. And we've been we've definitely certainly been talking about shortcut cir short circuiting that, but that's a whole yet another discussion. So in the one minute we have left, um, I think the action items are let's take everything that's in the presentation agenda. Um, let's start with Justin's. Let's invert it, because I think either Justin's makes sense, and we should figure out how to digest all of that. Sorry, could, could, um, think about it. We overuse the word digest. Um, and if and there's a decision tree, we either go forward with that because it's interesting or we say no and we go one of the other paths. And I, that would be my proposal is to figure out because they're all wrapped in the same set of conversations. Obviously people need the time to read it. So we have a week. If anything's not clear, please ping me on Slack or whatever. And call us it. Uh, just so I know, obviously, easy to throw together a markdown. Is there any value to having it somewhere with more commentability, for lack of a better word, on like per word or paragraph versus gist? Sure. I just suck it, suck it in a gist because whatever. I mean, I can open a pull request somewhere or something. I don't know. I, I don't know. I just, I, I don't know if that would help with like a week's worth of potential. I mean, I don't know. Maybe people won't have comments till next week, but. That's actually a bad idea. There is a bunch of detail that you might want to comment on the specific and how do you reference line number X when the line's going to move as the edits get done. So. It's 2021. We should have tools that let you do stuff like this. <laughs> All right. I think Justin's got some homework. Thanks, folks. Yep, thanks.